to Thanet Writers Meet Dean Atta. I'm Connor Sansby and I'm with poet Dean Atta today. Hello. Hello. Um, your work obviously touches on race, gender, um, sexuality. Um, do you consider yourself a political poet or more a personal poet? Both. I think I, I write personal things but I think they're about highly politicised subject matter. So I think talking about race or sexuality or mental health um, or gender, like uh, these things are heavily politicised, there's so much debate around so many of these things. Some things I don't think should be up for debate, but we in this Twitter culture and, and with our, our media always looking for clickbait, there's so many things that get debated out there that, um, you know, I put my two pence worth in with my poetry as well, but I come from the very personal perspective and it's, um, yeah, it's thoughts and the feelings and kind of painting a picture, it's not necessarily like trying to have a debate with people about it, it's just saying well, this is me and this is my experience of the world. I think it's very easy for people to have the debate because they want to debate rather than forgetting that they're talking about people mm, in exactly, that situation. Exactly. And I always write what I know and so whether it's about me or about someone who's close to me, I feel like I, I'm coming from an informed place and an authentic place and not just like writing random things, projecting my opinions or ideas onto people that I don't know at all um, because I feel like that's not really responsible. So I try and, if I'm going to write about something, I'm going to try and know it or research it um, pretty well. Yeah. You, you mentioned something there that, uh, that I thought was very interesting about your work in general. It is incredibly honest and it's never obfuscated. It's always very, this is the thing. Mm. And I, I love when poetry doesn't try and convince the audience that um, it's some kind of elite thing. It's like the communication between two people. Yeah. Um, it's a real challenge, actually, I find, to, to keep that conversation without trying to beat the issue over the head. Yeah, and I think I'm getting better at it as time goes on. I think my early poetry was like campaign type poetry, like this is the issue, I need you on my side. Um, and now I realise there may be sides but you don't have to take one. Like you can be somewhere in the middle, you can be kind of like slightly to one or slightly to the other, um, but you can kind of have all points of view included or you can just focus in on something really specific that's just like, I'm not taking a side, I'm just showing you this little fragment of what's going on here and then you can decide what, how that fits in the bigger picture. Um, but yeah, I think focusing in on a person or a moment um, kind of helps those bigger kind of debates and things um, feel more accessible to people. You said about your early work as compared to your, your new work. Mm. So you're currently working on a, a new book? Yes, The Black Flamingo. And I think what's changed from my first book, I'm Nobody's Nigger, to this book I'm writing now, The Black Flamingo, is a bit more subtlety, um, a bit more um, show don't tell, you know, and giving um, ideas space. Um, so not necessarily like cramming in loads of ideas, but kind of looking at one idea over several poems or several, you know, letting it kind of breathe and, it, and kind of grow into itself rather than being like, everything's wrong with the world and I'm going to list it all. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I've noted personally while going through the, uh, the work that's being included in the second collection mm. is your growth as a storyteller mm. within your poetry. Okay. Yeah. Um, so before you, you were discussing issues and now there's a really, really rich sort of storytelling going on there. Yeah. And I think Storytelling is so important and it can be done in so many ways. It can be done through poetry and novels um, in an oral sense. I have so many friends that are amazing storytellers at dinner parties and at, um, you know, when we're gathering amongst friends and it's interesting to hear people tell stories over and over again and sometimes they embellish them or, or add different details for a different audience and um, that's really interesting how we can tell the same story but it changes and I think the stories we tell each other and ourselves really affect how we feel about our place in the world so I think the stories I hope to tell are stories that will empower other people maybe people have had similar experiences to me so other black people queer people people who've had mental health challenges so stories that would help those people feel like um, the world isn't against them 
um, and there's a, there's a way to navigate it and have a positive experience in it despite some of the you know awful things that are going on because you know we know what the world is like but we also know that we can find um, communities and pockets of, of joy and hope and support and so that's kind of the things I want to highlight for now because I think we don't do that enough. Yeah, there's obviously there's two audiences when you talk about an issue. There's the people that you need to have a conversation with and the people who are affected by it. And it's very easy to be angry at the people that you need to have the conversation with rather than to be positive for the people that you know, are affected by this issue. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, and if I can kind of help buoy people up and help them see some hope, um, then they can also have those conversations and feel empowered to go into the world feeling a bit more um, understood and recognised. You know, I've always wanted to see myself in movies, in books, in, in, in the media in general, and I haven't a lot, so that's why I've put my stories out there so people like me can see themselves and what I've written. Do you have any advice for any poets beginning their journey? If you're beginning your journey as a poet, I'd say read lots of poetry. Um, but not just read lots of poetry, watch the videos on YouTube, go to open mics, go to slams, um, go to the more kind of um, traditional types of readings as well. And see the variety of poetry that's out there and pick and choose from them all. Don't feel like just because you want to perform your work, you can only look at spoken word. You can read poetry and um, you know experience the breadth of it. It's such a broad um, medium, such a broad form. There's so many ways of doing poetry. So I'd say don't feel limited and don't feel uh, marginalised if you are a, you know page poet, performance poet. It's all about the poetry and the beginning, you know, and the yeah. end. Um, so I think it has to be about you know seeing yourself in the, in the landscape of poetry and not just in a kind of a niche or a, a ghetto, um, so to speak. So I'd say be reading lots, be watching lots, be going to events if you can afford to, and um, yeah, just just take it all in and um, be accepting of your style changing over time. You know, you may think this is how I write, but that may change as you grow up. I've seen that happen with me, like my style is constantly changing, and I think that's great and fine. It's, it's interesting you mentioned you know, your age poet, your performance poet. It's something that I've personally felt a lot of frustration with, is people thinking that's the kind of poet you are, mm. or, or that I am, yeah. and not stepping outside that. Mm. I, I'm always encouraging page poets to come to, to slam, which is sort of like a very performance driven thing. Yeah, yeah. Because there's people that can do both so well. Like in this country, someone like Caroline Bird is amazing. And in the States, Dennis Smith is both an amazing, you know, page poet and performer. Um, and I think, you know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. You know, performing is an additional thing to the quality of your writing. I think focus on the writing, but if you can get up and perform, it's an amazing experience. Everyone should try it, I think. Um, it's hugely freeing, mm. what I find. Mm. Um, obviously, you're talking about page and performance. Mm. You've got one book currently out, but you've got three CDs as well. Yeah. How do you approach those? They were fun projects and collaborations with musicians that I knew, producers and musicians, and it was just a, a great way to present the work to maybe a different audience that would like it more with music. Um, and you know, and I had mixed feedback. Some people loved it with music, other people like I prefer it as a poem. Like it doesn't need the music. Um, and that's all well and good. So it was just worth trying and it's something that I was really happy to do. And I think that coming together with a musician or a group of musicians or a producer to put music to my poetry was, was really rewarding because it was like other people are putting their labour into making something that my words are at the core of. And that was really special because all of those three EPs that I did with my poetry and music, like I put them online for free, and everyone that um, you know was part of it, you know, gave their time to work on it for free. And I think that collaboration, um, I think as long as no one's exploiting each other, is really beautiful. Where you can like make something, put your time and energy into it, and then give it to the world, and it's not about the monetary exchange. Um, and yet, you know, you have to think about money at some point if you want to be a full time. Um, creative, but I think the opportunities to do projects that are passion projects and don't require funding and don't need to be sold um, is something really pure and special about that. Thank you very much for joining me today. You're welcome, thanks for having me.
behalf of Thanet Writers, I've been Connor Sansby. This has been Thanet Writers Meet Dean Atta. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>